Hi, I'm Mike Senna, and this is my HeroDroid BB-8 from Spin Master. I am going to show you how to take this thing apart and show you the insides of this uh, droid and how it works. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do here is you need to remove these little panels. They're you can tell they're removable panels and they're glued in by just the way they're glued in there. There's a deeper recess where uh, the panel is glued on. You need to take your putty knife and kind of slip it in to, to where they are, break the glue bond, and then kind of snap the panel out. You'll notice on each of the panels they'll have two little tabs. This tab was glued in uh, onto, the, onto the panel so it kind of broke off when I was trying to pry these open but you can always after you're done glue these back in and it'll look perfect so there's six of these panels and they hide something so after those panels are removed you'll notice uh, oh first of all the line the, the, the separation line here's a power uh, port the separation line runs through the half of the BB-8. It goes through one panel and two panels. So you know you have to remove these two side panels to separate the two halves. So there's a screw here and a screw here on each panel that you remove. Now these screws hold a hold the axle in place so it just doesn't shift and wobble. So if you do remove these screws, nothing will fall into the BB-8. So if you don't want to go further and decide to stop at one point, you can screw the screws back in and no harm. They'll go right back in perfectly. So the next thing you want to do is, after you remove these screws, is take your hammer and this putty knife and you're going to break the glue bond all along the, uh, the panel, all around it and then the panel will remove. Um, so there's just a little glue bond going around. Uh, you may break off some little tabs. These little tabs went underneath the plastic here and no problem. I mean, these, this will glue back in perfectly fine. Uh, after that one's off, of course, there's two screws here on this one also. You remove those screws and take the hammer and the putty Funny knife and go around and, and pop that panel off as well. So after you got those two panels off, now we can see the line going all the way through. We want to break the glue bonds in here. There are no glue bonds here in, on the detail pieces. Uh, so what I did was I hammered uh, this plastic here to break the bond because the plastic is overlapping a little bit. And then when that's done, you work your putty knife into there and break the bond that's here and here. Then you spin it around, you hammer this side to break that lip, and you use your putty knife on both sides to get that done. So now, the, the only screws left to hold this together, there's four screws. And they look like this. And they are at the axle points. So you see this is the power port and it's got, this is the one point of the axle that goes straight through the body. So these two screws right here go down uh, this way. And on the opposite side, we have the same exact configuration for the axle that's mounted right here. So we remove these two screws. Once all those things are removed, the body, two body halves should be able to come apart. So the power port is right here. We're just going to take this and lift it off. So that comes off. You can see where the screws went to attach uh, the whole thing together. Uh, we'll see the door kind of just lifts off, it's a piece of plastic that you can put it back in. So when you want to reassemble your 
uh, hero droid. So here's the mechanism in here. The first thing I will do is lift it out so you can see it. And there it is. At the bottom we see the weight shifting that will make the BB-8 turn from side to side when that weight goes. Uh, what else do we see here? So this side houses the motor and picture this as a, just a giant wheel and the giant wheel just happens to be this entire ball. So the wheel is, is moving and this is the motor here is that's driving that wheel forward and the weight, this weight is once you offset it to the front and the motor offsets it to the front, the uh, droid wants to move. So each time we push that weight forward, the, the droid wants to move forward. So that's how it moves. The motor pushes the weight up, the ball starts to roll, and then when it stops, the weight goes to the bottom and the droid stops. So interesting things that we see here. Here is where the head goes on. Now, if you have a, a Hero Droid BB-8, you'll notice that the droid does not work with the head off. And that's because when you put the magnetic head on, the magnets will actually pull this lever up. When this comes up, there's a little micro switch right here that says, closes and then opens. So when it's open, the Hero Droid knows that the head is on and it can start doing all its functions. Okay, so in this mechanism, like I said before, this is the motor. You can hear the gearing with it. The motor's located right down here. It's a drive motor. And this, is, this whole thing houses the gears inside here, and you can hear them moving and together in there. Okay, so on the opposite side is the switch and everything and, and the power, uh, power switch, right? So this one is freewheeling. It doesn't need to uh, do anything special. Um, let's see, down here on this pendulum, when the, in order for the pendulum to know where it's centered, there's a little uh, sensor right there. So when the pendulum finally swings down, it clicks on this piece of plastic and the mechanism knows that now it's centered. Uh, there's a lot of little sensors like that. Um, that's the way this centers itself every single time you turn it on. It, uh, it spins around and um, there is a sensor over here in the back of this head. You can barely see it in there. And that, when this head spins, it comes around and it'll, that sensor will tell it uh, when the head is centered and facing forward in the right direction. So you'll see some this optical ring here that uh, gives feedback, just kind of like a mouse. If you ever opened up a mouse and seen a mouse wheel, it has an encoder like this inside of it so that it'll know exactly how far that it's spun because of the counting that this optical sensor is going to do, counting the little flashes. So that all goes down into this uh, controller board here. Uh, this motor here is to control the head motion this way and there also is this big gear here that turns the entire mechanism, the top mechanism, it rotates this around the axle. So this head mechanism then can spin this way and it can also go this way in this two directions and it also can go forwards and backwards. So you saw this motor that spins it this way. Uh, this motor in here 
will make it tilt side to side in a side to side motion along the axle. And then there's a motor down here that will make it make the head part tilt forwards and backwards. This one doesn't seem to be I'm not going to force it, but you can see that's what it does from the half gear here. So that's how the head gimbal moves up and down and, and side to side. Um, so I will put this back in here. We're going to line up the switch, the switch, drop her back in. So I have this little paper clip that I just bent into a weird shape that uh, I have to put underneath this to lift it up so that uh, it'll fool the mechanism to think that the head's actually on. And then we'll turn them on. So the million dollar question is, can this be scaled up to a life-sized, real-sized BB-8 and work? I think the concepts are great on this. I think it's, I think it's really beautiful. Uh, I think it can be scaled up to use in a real-sized BB-8, except of course, I don't know that there's anything on this we can actually use uh, that is in this configuration right now. We need bigger motors, we need bigger controllers. And, but the configuration of the motors, the gearing, uh, the, the way it's done, uh, it doesn't have to be completely duplicated, but the concepts are certainly there of how this whole mechanism moves ahead this way and this way, left and right, and uh, turns the, the dome. I mean, it's, it's done very well and also the way the weight moves along this track is is very well done. Spin Master was just crazy. The engineers there are very, very, uh, very, very good, uh, obviously, at what they did. Uh, we'd have to take our own gyros, of course, and put them in there, but uh, with this basic model, I think uh, I think we really have something here that we can duplicate and, and put into the models. So I'm just going to give you a 360 here of this, of this excellent piece of uh, machinery. So this is the scale difference between this BB-8 model of the inside to go in there. So there's quite a uh, quite a bit that has to go on before it can uh, become something as this this as this large. So this is the difference in size. I did it in my other video, but I'll show you here too. Uh, this is the Spin Master Eurodroid BB-8, and this is a real life-size BB-8. So what do you think about the Spin Master BB-8? Do you like him? He approves. The first thing I'm gonna do is turn on the transmitter, then I'm gonna turn on the head, this light going. I'm going to turn on the body and you'll see it start to move. 
So I'm holding on to the body because it'll oscillate otherwise. Because without the head and without the other piece, it's going to uh, move and it's not going to find its center. It's not going to be happy because of the sensors. So um, what you need to see here and what you need to notice is the, the actual head movement. If I move the body this way or this way, the head's counteracting the movement. And so it's always trying to stay centered. Um, so that's, that's an interesting thing to, to note because now I'm going to try to move it to, uh, to the, the left. And you'll see the head now turn into the move. I'm going to turn it to the right. And you'll see the head turn to the right as well. So that's when you're taking it and you're you're actually doing the turn. BB-8's head is going to go into the turn when you're using the controller. Slightly, see that? And that's to help actually the count the counterweight going over there, but also the head goes over there, so the whole body tilts more, and it helps it in the turn. If you saw my other video where I'm, I'm making turns with the BB-8, you see that happen. Um, that's countering when you're, it does the exact opposite if you physically move it, the head tries to stay on top. So I guess if it's parked on a slope or something like that, then the head will remain center on top if it's kind of like at an angle for some reason. So. Um, the, um, I guess that's the only thing I wanted to show you as far as the motion, but it's got a lot of sensors on it. Uh, like I said, if I start moving it and I let it go, it's, it's, it tries to, the, the gyros try to keep it centered. And since it doesn't have all its weight, so all the weights are critical, the head is critical, and that's how the gyros have to be designed. It can't be designed to, for a, a system like this can't be designed to one thing, uh, one universal weight. It has to be designed for, uh, for the weight that you're going to be using for your droid. And um, I guess that's it. Um, if you like this video, uh, let me know. And uh, this is the deconstruction of the BB-8. Oh, maybe one thing I might not might want to mention is uh, the wheels. They all go in one direction. They don't, uh, they're not swivel, they're not anything else. These are, look like a very slippery uh, nylon and it works remarkably well on this going forwards. It tracks well and even spinning. I mean, there's not that much friction here and sliding and it's going over these 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 imperfections uh, that's a, a really odd thing so in any event i haven't taken apart the head the head's pretty basic um, but uh what you needed to see was the inside here so Hope that answers a lot of your questions and hopes that hope that satisfies your curiosity so you don't have to do this to yours. And uh, that's it. See you later.